Hello, I'm John Sargent, and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Will ID cards make us safer? Should we scrap the speed limit? And what's Russell Brand got that I haven't? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. In the red corner, it's Marcus Brigstock and his special guest, Dara O'Brien. <laughs> And joining Rufus Hound in the blue corner, please welcome Chris Addison. <laughs> OK, we start with round one and a big issue that affects us all. Tonight we focus on the greatest ever nation in the history of civilization, Britain. The pound's falling, unemployment's rising, and the credit crunch has destroyed more businesses than a whole series of Dragon's Den. <laughs> Our once bustling high streets are lined with boarded up shops, and the only boom is the sound of the wrecking ball knocking down Woolworths. <laughs> the UK economy is now officially receding quicker than Jude Law's hairline. <laughs> it's all doom and gloom, or is it? Because the issue I want the teams to argue is this. Britain will bounce back better than ever. Up first and supporting the statement for the red team, it's Marcus Brigstock. That's what Britain's like. Ladies and gentlemen, Britain will bounce back. Of course it'll bounce back. It's the nature of what we do and who we are. And anybody who gets up here and tries to tell you that we don't have it in us is defying you. Don't believe the haters. Vote red. Thank you. <laughs> OK, next up, opposing Marcus, it's Chris Addison. Britain will not bounce back, ladies and gentlemen, because Britain cannot bounce back. Because, unlike what my colleague here says, we do not want to bounce back. Britain is not a bouncy nation, as Marcus says. That's the Americans. They're the bouncy nation, wobbly, really, technically speaking, <laughs> if you punch them or shake them or just surprise them. <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> we don't want to bounce back. We like wallowing. We love to wallow in our own misery for decades. This is the country that has defined itself on the blitz spirit. Our grandparents went on and on about how great it was when nobody had any food and they were all miserable and they didn't have anything. They had to draw up the back of their legs with powdered egg or something. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> listening there and there war, you know, all of that. That is why the Second World War lasted for six years. We could have knocked the Nazis out in four weeks, but we were enjoying ourselves. <laughs> and this is our generation's chance to build some of those blitz stories with which we can torture our own grandchildren. You don't know what it was like, we shall say to them. In the recession, we could only afford iPod Nanos. <laughs> you any idea? What it's like only to be able to carry around more songs than you can physically fit in your head in a week? <laughs> it's a nightmare! <laughs> and in any case, even if we want to back, which we don't, we couldn't, we don't understand money, money is beyond us. It has defeated us. Consumers in this country are in debt to the tune of £1.8 trillion, pounds, which is precisely what you get in a country whose citizens are prepared to take loan advice from a cartoon blue phone. That's... <laughs> How long would you like a loan? Why, yes, hallucination, I would. <laughs> hey, presto, £1.8 trillion pounds in debt. You and me. And that is why I urge you, for the sake of your children, for the sake of your grandchildren, listen not to this idiot's vision and vote blue! <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Dara, do you think that Ireland, do you think Ireland will, will bounce back? Well, yes, we probably will, because we're a small, quick-thinking nation and we're having a bad time at the moment, but we'll, you know, yes, I do. I think it turns out, and then we'll buy you and, and we'll turf you out and then you can stay around. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give you one boat and you can all fit onto it. We'll give you the Isle of Wight, because apparently the whole world could fit onto that, right? Uh, <laughs> and we couldn't be arsed with it. And you can all just roam around there whining about how things were great in Dunkirk, uh, like you always do. You whine to the longest period of, of financial security you've had. You, you've been richer for 10 years than you'd ever been in your lives and you were just pining, pining for a recession. <laughs> it's very convincing when someone like Chris Addison gets up and does a fantastic job of convincing you to give up. That there's no point, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, don't give in. No, I'll tell you exactly why. Because in this country, we do have a history of moaning. 
but you listen to anybody. Go to the post office tomorrow and listen to an old person moan and hear what happens at the end. They cannot leave it on a down note. Every single one. Well, yes, the flat's filled up with sewage from upstairs. Both my hips have gone. The whole place is being repossessed. And our Maureen fell down the front steps and smashed her face off. Still, I'll have a cup of tea later. <laughs> They end on an up note. That's what Britain does. We bounce back. We have a cup of tea later. Absolute horse dung. <laughs> we don't bounce back. We crawl back. We don't bounce back. The notion that there's a magic spell that can be cast and then suddenly everything's better again is nonsense. You want magic, unicorns and the broken tears of a, an invisible horse. <laughs> Okay, thank you all. So, will Britain bounce back better than ever? It's time to ask our studio audience. Hold up your red cards if you agree with Marcus and Dara, and the blue ones for Rufus and Chris. Vote now. That is it! That is it, ladies and gentlemen! So, a clear victory for the blue team. Well done, Chris and Rufus. They've convinced our audience that Britain will not bounce back. You're quite right. That's why I'm abandoning modern Britain. I'm moving to Yorkshire. <laughs> According to some experts, Britain won't enjoy another boom for 20 years. Well, I hope you enjoy it, you bastards. <laughs> our next round is called Flip Flop, where we find out how well our comedians can argue with themselves. I'm going to give one member of each team a statement which they must support until they hear this sound. At which point, they must perform a U-turn and argue against it, then flip-flop their views every time I press the buzzer. Dara, you're up first. I'd like you to start off by arguing that the male genitalia are a cruel joke. <laughs> off you go. Ladies and gentlemen, the male genitalia are, in fact, a cruel joke. Now, I'm presuming relatively few of you have seen my cock. Uh, but <laughs> were I to offer it as evidence, and, in fact, all of the little bag of joy that surrounds it, uh, were I to offer all of that up to you as evidence, it would be uh, hideously obvious that this is what it is. We have been delivered onto just this ridiculous sh little shy, wormy rope thing hiding in the undergrowth, staring out, meek and unimpressive. <laughs> But when it rises, uh, <laughs> when it takes wings, ladies and gentlemen, and stretches to its full massive length, then, then like a weapon, like a tower, like a pyramid, a, a chimney stack staring <laughs> down upon you, then, then, ladies and gentlemen, you feel its wrath. But that happens all too rarely. <laughs> Most of the time, you're trying to coax us out. Are you there? Are you there? You're not there at all. No. Uh, oh, and always vulnerable, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, let's face it, not attractive, right? Uh, but you can't talk, women. Look at what you've got, all right? Uh, <laughs> you think ours looks so good? At least it's there to see instead of where the hell is it? Oh, Jesus, that's what I made all the efforts for. I don't think so. Uh, but at least yours is mysterious uh, and secluded. <laughs> Secluded and, the, and its pleasures are given up more, you know. Uh, <laughs> why am I even. No, why is this round called flip flop when I'm discussing my cock? Why do I have to do that? <laughs> what when you're a big man, by the way? This is the worst. If you're six foot four, really anything, even your one, your normal one on me, terribly small. But that's why, <laughs> that's why you have to have, honestly, massive, you know. And by the way, size 13 feet. Size 13 feet. <laughs> 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 Not a good thing, as it turns out, uh, because <laughs> what that means is when I look down, I see both it and my massive feet, and it just makes it here even smaller, uh, <laughs> particularly when I wank with my feet. So uh, <laughs> it's actually <laughs> difficult to gain purchase. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dara. A leading churchman recently expressed dismay at the growing use of male nudity in the media. Personally, I think he's wrong, but I'm not going to bash the bishop on national television. <laughs> it's said that a man's member directly relates to the size of his feet, so I always save time in Clark's by shuffling through the door with my trousers round my ankles. <laughs> OK, Rufus, you're up next. I'd like you to begin by arguing 
that political correctness is a good thing. Off you go. Political correctness is a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's the uh, system by which we can police idiots. <laughs> we look at the idiots and we say things like, don't say that, and they say, why not? And we say, because it's not right. Um, in this way, they learn to stop being idiots. <laughs> but they don't really learn. They just form small clubs uh, where they exchange politically incorrect ideas with one another. I was reading in the Daily Mail only yesterday that we should love one another. <laughs> if you're a twat. Uh, <laughs> if you're a hoity-toity, guardian-reading, hummus-making, spliff-smoking, labour-voting... Hoodie hugging <laughs> lesbian. <laughs> All of my friends are hoity toity, hummus, <laughs> munching, observer, spliffy lesbians. Uh, but because I only have one friend, and <laughs> that friend is KD Lang. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Rufus. Community Secretary Hazel Blair said recently that we're all too worried about political correctness. If you don't know which one Hazel Blair is, she's the ugly ginger one with a fat ass. <laughs> right, time for the studio audience to decide who flipped and who flopped. It's red cards for Dara or blue cards for Rufus. Vote now. So, a clear win for the Reds. Bad luck, Rufus, but congratulations, Dara O'Brien. <laughs> Join us after the break when we'll be finding out who's really best, Will Smith or Brad Pitt. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, the show with more crossed wires than a Thunderbird's orgy. Right. <laughs> Next up is the slideshow, where the teams illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Chris, I'd like you to start by arguing that Will Smith is better than Brad Pitt. Here's your first picture. Away you go. It's been a tough life for Will Smith, rags to riches in West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground, is where he spent most of his days <laughs> chilling out, relaxing, just maxing all cool and all, shooting some b-ball outside the school. Then a couple of guys who were up to no good <laughs> started making trouble in the neighbourhood. He got in one little fight, his mummy got scared and said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. <laughs> It's been easy for Brad Pitt, as we can see in this next slide, um, because um, <laughs> he has never eaten any of Nigella's food and therefore has a six-pack stomach. <laughs> of course, the single best thing about Will Smith is... <laughs> the fact that he can kill dinosaurs with only his eyes. <laughs> uh, he has done many things, of course, as, uh, as uh, people who have seen his films will know. He's punched an alien on the head. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, been nice to a little boy. Tremendous screen chemistry between him and his son. Very difficult to achieve. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, I think, uh, the, uh, the one thing that I would say <laughs> about Brad Pitt is, uh, is that he can levitate, and that certainly is... <laughs> and that really is how he's built his career, whereas Will Smith, of course, has simply continued to live in a hovel in West Philadelphia, making £100 million grossing box office films uh, for his entire life and is therefore much, much, much better than Mr Angelina Jolie. Oh. Thanks, Chris. Marcus, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that Brad Pitt is better than Will Smith. Here's your first picture. Off you go. Well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. There is the wonderful Brad Pitt, who obviously is better than Will Smith for the simple reason that he's succeeded in uh, sharing his life with Angelina Jolie. And that is to his credit. You know, Will Smith is a tiny, tiny man. Most of his mates call him Half Pint Smith. And, uh, and he's small. And, you know, because he's so small and so pathetic, he has never succeeded in sharing his life with the beautiful Angelina Jolie <laughs> in the way that Brad Pitt certainly has. And I know amongst all of us, alarm bells are ringing now. You're thinking, <laughs> am I going to hang this entire argument on the fact that Brad Pitt has successfully shared his life with Angelina Jolie? But as this next picture will show... <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Because these are Duran Duran. There are, there are five men there, and if you added 
Will Smith to that, there'd be six men, none of whom have successfully shared their lives <laughs> with the beautiful Angelina Jolie uh, and adopted children, who they will now train to... Uh, <laughs> to... <laughs> to do wonderful, wonderful things. And that is why you must vote with the red team. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. So who is best? Will Smith or Brad Pitt? Our studio audience must now decide who made the best case. Vote now. A victory for the Reds. Well done, Marcus Brigstock. Marcus convinced the audience that Brad Pitt is better than Will Smith, although, to be honest, I wouldn't kick either of them out of bed. <laughs> Brad Pitt is married to Angelina Jolie, who was hoping to pick up an Oscar, or a Jenny, or a Nicholas, or any other small orphan that took her eye. <laughs> They're the only couple who have a loyalty card with Barnardo's. <laughs> this next round focuses on another major cultural issue. We live in an image-conscious society where appearance is everything, and man is constantly striving for perfection. But what is perfection? And is it embodied by this man? Please welcome the subject of our next debate, Robbie Anshant. Rufus and Dara, you're up for this one. Dara first, and the topic I'd like you to argue is bodybuilders look fabulous. <laughs> so far, ladies and gentlemen, on tonight's show, we have argued... <laughs> so far tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on this show... Oh, wow, it's like... <laughs> uh, that's like... That's just... <laughs> it's like if I squeeze you, you go... <laughs> <laughs> So far on tonight's show, if you've been keeping track, we have argued that the male genitalia is either a cruel joke or the finest thing in the world. Then we spent five minutes ago saying, who's better, Will Smith uh, or Brad Pitt? Now it's the motion is that bodybuilders look fabulous. When did this turn into the gayest show on television? <laughs> Here, that's probably the only bit there. Uh, so... <laughs> Could you break me like a twig? Before I say anything at all, right? Could you act? You could, you could. OK, let's just get that cleared up, will we? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh... <laughs> this man looks incredible, ladies and gentlemen. The very fact that he walked out was this, was this debate won. Like, he walked out and you went, hey, fantastic. And then this, this business, look at that! Hey! <laughs> Can you hold shit between them and everything? Can you? Uh, sorry. Oh, right, OK, great. No, let's not, cos that's... <laughs> that reminds me... <laughs> That reminds you of a hell of a weekend I once had. Uh, so, so. <laughs> I'm giddy cos he's here, right? So, uh, <laughs> that's what fabulousness will do to you. Look at this. He is your potential. You could do this, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to do it because he's done it and there you've seen what it looks like and it saves you a lot of time working on just that, right? Which is how they do it, isn't it? Like one muscle at a time, you pick a thing and you go, right, that one, I'm going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to go, well, it only normally works my eyebrows, this muscle, but if I really put the effort in, I can make it four foot wide, right? <laughs> Listen, I've got nothing to say other than this. This is glorious, right? Bodybuilding... I just stroked you again by accident. I'm sorry. <laughs> which is, I've touched you three times, which I just don't want you to get the idea that I'm just taking every opportunity I can. <laughs> oh! Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to do this one more time. Zip! Right, uh, <laughs> He's an entirely frictionless man. If you... <laughs> This is the greatest thing about him. You could put him into CERN, into that tube that fires him around, and he would go, foom, at near light speed, because there'd be no friction, and he'd shoot around really quickly, and then he'd smash into those atoms, <laughs> like this guy, and he'd tear them apart, that Higgs boson. He'd find that. He'd find that just by a glance. Ladies and gentlemen, I got nothing to say other than just my puppy-like excitement to have him here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him. Just look at him. He's fabulous. Vote with us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Thanks to our Rufus, now it's your turn to oppose the statement <laughs> and tell us that bodybuilders don't look fabulous at all. Good luck. <laughs> don't be swung by Dara's own homoerotic <laughs> jubilation at having this man here. Look at this man, this poor, feeble-minded wretch <laughs> who is labouring under the misapprehension that we still live in the Dark Ages. Because <laughs> there was a time when the survival of your family depended on looking like this and being able to fight off bears and Vikings. <laughs> Were we in 1100 AD, this man would look fabulous. <laughs> but we are not. We live in a Viking free age of lockable houses and community support officers. <laughs> <laughs> a safe time. So the quest to look like this can be born out of one thing and one thing alone. Vanity. <laughs> what we're looking at here is a vain man. A man so narcissistic that all he really wants to be doing right now is looking in the mirror and playing with himself. <laughs> the tragedy, ladies and gentlemen, is thanks to the freakishly bulbous nature of his arms and shrunken penis... <laughs> ..that he cannot reach. Which is actually just as well, because not knowing his own strength, were he ever to grab a handful of penis, <laughs> he'd wrench it away from the moorings... <laughs> ..like an angry bear at a sausagey barbecue. <laughs> You might think I'm being rude, that I'm hurting his feelings, but don't worry, it doesn't understand me. <laughs> this is because, whilst we were all at school learning to read, write and speak, he was in the school field with the PE teacher getting what he was told was a protein shake. <laughs> Anytime you want to stop him, anytime, just go for it. Just... <laughs> the compliments that you'll hear bodybuilders pay one another are things like nice guns, or hey man, you're looking ripped, or great shape. But I tell you now, they all translate to the same thing help me. <laughs> Vote blue. I thank you. Thank you, Rufus, and a big round of applause for our bodybuilder, Robbie Anchin. <laughs> Marcus and Chris, would you care to flex your argumental muscles? I'm very tempted to weigh in on this, but I know something that Rufus doesn't, which is that he's sharing a dressing room with Robbie. <laughs> No, but I'll tell you why I'm not scared. It's because you know as well as I do these are TV dressing rooms. In any TV dressing room, there's a minimum of four mirrors. Oh, sure, he'll see me and start coming towards me, but then he'll catch a glimpse of himself. Hello. OK, that's it. So, do bodybuilders look fabulous? It's time for the audience to decide which team made the best case. Vote now. <laughs> A clear win for the blue team. Well done, Rufus and Chris. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really? I <laughs> They've convinced the audience that bodybuilders do not look fabulous. There are many advantages to being a bodybuilder. You're physically fit, you can lift heavy weights, and you can fit your genitals in a thimble. <laughs> <laughs> so the scores then at the end of that round are Marcus and Dara 2, Rufus and Chris 2.
Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest an argument to go with them. OK, here's your first one. <laughs> is an argument to make Camilla Queen. <laughs> no, 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 you may mock, but imagine how that would look on a stamp. Surely this, this is really an argument about when the photographer says, Camilla, could you stand next to the horse? Just taking a minute to go, I wonder where this photograph <laughs> will be used. <laughs> Is it an argument for getting your false teeth fitted at a registered dentist? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the cue. <laughs> but she's just said to him and gone, so how long have you been waiting? <laughs> <laughs> Next picture. Is this an argument for sticking to the way that we currently get the lottery numbers? <laughs> This isn't an argument, but is this what Carol Thatcher did after the one show? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's definitely an argument against looking under Ulrika Johnson's stairs. <laughs> On we go. Ooh. It's an argument in favour of shutting the door. <laughs> I think that's an argument that somebody should check where Ken Livingston is. <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Vote now. <laughs> so, I can tell you that the red team have won, which means this week's winners are the red team. <laughs> Well done, Marcus Brigstock and Dara O'Brien. Commiserations to Rufus Hound and Chris Addison. That's all we've got time for. Good night. Good night.